What up YouTube, TK here, and today we are tearing down the Macintosh SE. Let's get stuck into it. We have the primary tool for the job, the Torx T15 screwdriver on a really long extension, so let's get stuck into it. We also have this weird tool, which is called a Mac Cracker, and I have no idea how to use it. Well, I've got a theory. It involves doing this. Oh, that's pretty cool. That kind of does something. I think I just realized there's some screws I haven't undone. Oops. There we go. That's a piece of cake. Oh, beautiful. So here we have this nice piece of cardboard that warns us about the dangerous high voltages inside. Hopefully you don't get to see me die on camera. And we've also got the adjustments for the CRT for various parameters, which would be useful because a fair few of these old Macs of mine uh, aren't quite using the full width of their CRT anymore. Um, we've got this little RF cover, very nice. Revision B, so it didn't take them too many attempts. We've got, ah, now this is very interesting. This one actually has an expansion and it does have a hard drive. So something interesting about this Mac SE is on the front, you can see it's a dual floppy model. However, one of the floppy drives inside has been removed. Confusing, I know. Inside is a hard drive. Uh, that's an aftermarket edition. Um, at least after it was first sold from the factory. It's not working, uh, or at least it doesn't boot off it. I haven't run any disk utilities to try and discover if the drive does still actually work, but you know, we'll take it out first, take a look at it, and then uh, we'll try firing it up. Also here you can see this backplane connector. That, with this beautiful vintage ribbon cable, is a connector, I believe, for a special card that would allow you to use a special Apple 5.25 inch drive to read IBM disks. Could be wrong, we'll drill down further and find out. Up here you've got all the analog circuitry for driving the big, dangerous CRT. We can also see the fan Steve Jobs hated so much, and the power supply. Again, not too interesting. Logic board all the way at the bottom here. So let's see if we can figure out how to get that out. All right, so first to take this out, we've got to basically unplug all these cables because they're fouling as we try and slide the main board out. And just be careful not to touch anything that looks scary around this area. Don't try this at home. I am trying it at home and, you know, let's see what happens to me. Looks like a very old SCSI hard drive. And look at this ugly cable. Hideous. Just, just gray, gray is better. Why all this? Ugly red and blue, it looks like a bad tie. Ugh. Sickening. This is gonna be an absolute pain in the ass to plug back in. So I've just undone a couple of screws down in here so I can take this hard drive carriage off and I've got to undo the power cable, which as you may know is with really thin cable there. So if I undo this hard drive, I can undo all that and then I can hopefully get this power connector undone and slide the main board out. Assuming I haven't already destroyed the main board by trying to yank it out already. But you know my luck, YouTube. Alright, so basically I was being an idiot. I forgot to unplug the power cable, so I took out the hard drive cage. Got the hard drive here, which looks flipping weird. We'll get to that in a minute. I was able to undo the power cable and then slide the main board out. There's a trick for young players here. This cable connects to a front panel LED, it will get you into trouble. If you yank too fast, we'll just unclip that and we're ready to go. Now this might look a bit weird to you if you've seen an SE logic board before. That is because it's got this big expansion card. Now I believe based on the rear panel, which has this connector, I think it's a 37 pin connector or something. I believe it's a card for connecting a special Apple 5.25 inch disc drive. It may not be, we will find out in a tick. Just pop that up and it's connected by these little pins, which I don't appreciate. Apple computer Macintosh SE bus PC drive card. 
this card is what we thought it was. It is a expansion card for the Macintosh SE, and it allows you to connect a special Apple five and a quarter inch disk drive for reading PC disks. Pretty cool. You can see it's very old. It's got this old Apple computer logo, very old fashioned. A 1987 by Crikey. Um, you know, it's pretty boring. It's got a bunch of 74 series logic on it. Um, little uh, resistor network car chip or something there. Uh, AMD chip here, that's uh, pretty interesting. A couple of NEC chips. Um, might look those up later, see what they do, but yeah. Oh, look, they've even silk screened for the barcode label. That's pretty interesting. All right, so here we have the SE mainboard. We got the star of the show, the Motorola 68000. Very cool. Got a big uh, Blue Logic chip here, special part. All the Macs of this era have them. We got our three ROMs here, pretty cool. Uh, Crystal running at 15.6672 megahertz. That'll be divided by two to run the system bus. We got down here, we got our chip running the ADB bus. That's for your keyboard and mouse and similar peripherals. That's actually a microchip 16C something PIC. Uh, they basically just thought they'd get was to uh, program a PIC rather than make an ASIC to run the ADB bus. And we got a Zilog chip here. Z8530, blah, 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 RSCC. I'm pretty sure that's the chip running the serial ports. And that was really cool because instead of just being a basic UR, it was able to do a little bit more. And that's how they got Apple Talk networking running off this chip. So that's pretty cool. Ah, actually, sorry, I made a small mistake. ROM high, ROM low. Here's the IWM or the integrated WAS machine. That runs the uh, floppy ports down here. We got our RAM sims up here and we've got the special uh, Mac SE. Uh, PDS slot, which stands for Processor Direct Slot. That's basically just all the 68,000 address lines broken out into a bit of plastic. Pretty cool. We've got these little ferrite beads here, which uh, probably deal with the ADB port. Nothing too special. we got our reset switch and our debug switch. And very awesomely, we have our pram battery, which has not exploded. Uh, we're probably going to cut that off uh, to prevent it ever destroying the board, but it's really great that that's intact. And this whole board looks in really great condition. And if you're wondering, this, this Mac SE does actually work. And, you know, that battery being intact and the capacitors being intact is a big reason for that. It shows what you can do. If you engineer a board properly and you spend money on high quality components, it'll last a long time. I've got uh, boards newer than this. For example, my LC3, they've been ruined because they spec cheap capacitors and cheap batteries, which corroded the whole thing. So this is really nice to see. Another thing about these early Macintoshes is they weren't very easy to upgrade. Uh, the Macintosh SE here was one of the first that you actually could upgrade. Uh, that even extends to things like the RAM. Generally, if you wanted any upgrade done, you had to take it to a Apple technician because they were worried about you dying because the CRT is built into the case. Another thing is, for example, to change the RAM, you've actually got to cut off a resistor. They didn't put jumpers on these early boards. You actually had to change a resistor over to... Uh, to change the RAM, which I think is amusing. We've only got the standard one mega RAM in here for 256 kilobyte SIMs, and it's annoying because I don't have anything bigger to put in. But, you know, them's the brakes. It doesn't look like there's any way to put an FPU in either on this board. So one thing that is common knowledge around vintage computer fans is batteries cause problems. Now, this one uh, is quite similar to the one in my Macintosh 2. Uh, they're both computers from around 1987, and they both have VADA batteries soldered to the motherboard and they both survived all this time. Now, I didn't take the ones out of my Macintosh 2, which weirdly had two of them. I don't know if I want to take the one out of this either because, oh, it's a bit dead. Okay, I will take that out. I didn't take the ones out of my Mac 2 because they were still showing over three volts each. However, this one appears quite dead. Now, Varda have clearly made a great battery that has lasted uh, 987, what is that, 20, 27 years. That's amazing. Sorry, 28 years. Um, but yeah, it is dead now, so I will cut that off. Um, yeah, compared to a lot of the other batteries Ma uh, Apple started using in the 90s and ruined motherboards, uh, you know, the stuff they were using in the 80s was much better. Yeah, that is absolutely dead. Millivolts, my friends, millivolts. Tragic. Don't smell bad though. Don't know if that's a thing. So yeah, generally, check the pram battery, even if it hasn't exploded. If it's bad, take it out. No regrets. I'll probably put a socket in there, but I think the current sockets I have are too big. But yeah, we'll see what happens. That's pretty much it for the uh, Macintosh SE teardown. Uh, we'll leave it there for today. We'll 
open up the old Rodeem hard drive in a uh, separate video. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I'm gonna go and put this back together. All right, now we've got it back together, let's go ahead and power it on. So we get the chime and we'll get the icon asking for a disc as we have removed the hard drive which is non-functional. Pop in a system disc, happy Mac, and we're booting. So all is well and good for this Mac SE. Hopefully in the future I'll be able to find a new hard drive for it. But for now, uh, we'll wrap it up. TK out.